and he growled with his Grinch fingers, nervously drumming. I must stop Christmas from coming. But how? Then he got an idea. An awful idea. Everybody, this is Praxis, and what a beautiful morning it is here this morning. We just had an ice storm, everything got glazed in ice, it's just beautiful. If you've ever been in an area with an ice storm, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a gorgeous morning to wake up to, and it's got me thinking about, you know, this time of the year, this season of, you know, kind of doom and gloom and pandemic fear and everything, that, you know, there's more to life than that. There's still beauty, and in this season of hope, Christmas is supposed to be the season of hope. In this season of hope, there is still reason for hope and optimism about our future. And I say that as someone, I'm a prepper. Uh, I'm constantly on this channel saying, hey, you know, difficult times are ahead, you know, stack your pantry to the roof. I still believe that, but that's not all that's in our future. There are, uh, you know, reasons for optimism. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that in this video right here. Uh, one thing that in particular has a lot of people concerned is sort of the authoritarian push for more centralized power throughout the world and here in the United States. States as well. That's been a push and pull in, you know, in our culture, uh, our country since the very beginning. You know, there was the push between more centralized control with John Adams and, and his camp, and then, you know, less centralized control with, uh, you know, Thomas Jefferson. It's been a push and pull since the very beginning of our country. And um, I, I, I think that oftentimes when people get into the mindset uh, that there is a, a group of people kind of conspiring to do something, and I don't doubt that. Uh, you know, there are people who are in power, and that's just a natural thing that humans do, is that if they have power or advantage or opportunity, they like to take advantage of it. And it's not just humans, that's life in general. That's that's organisms for you. They, they take advantage of niches. If there's a weakness, they take advantage of it. You know, love it or hate it, that's the way that it is. Now, I think that in, it's kind of a waste of a human life. One of the opportunities we have with this brain that we've been gifted is that we have the opportunity to kind of break out of that cycle. Not all people have done that. Most people haven't done that. Most people still work in that kind of reptil reptilian mindset of, uh, you know, get as much as I can, as fast as I can. Um, again, I think it's a waste of a human life, but there's plenty of people that do it. And, you know, I, it's hard to fault them for it because that's what organisms do. Um, but when people get into this mindset where they, they think, you know, there's a conspiracy and people are trying to do this, I think that there's oftentimes a, a desire, or not a desire, but a knee-jerk reaction to jump that because there's a group of people trying to accomplish something, that that thing is going to be accomplished. Yes, I'm sure there are lots of people that would like to consolidate their power, get more central uh, authority, and, you know, just make things better and easier for themselves, make themselves more powerful. I know that there are people, I don't know, I presume that there are people out there that are interested in doing that, but just because they're interested in doing that doesn't mean that they're going to be successful. And I think there's lots of reasons to have some optimism, like I said, that uh, those efforts are going to start to flounder in the near future. One reason is that here in the United States, we have a system of elections. Every couple of year uh, years there are elections. I'm sorry, I'm having a little trouble uh, talking because it's very beautiful out but it's also it's also very cold so we'll try to wrap up this video um you know as briefly as i can but to share this message with you guys um so uh you know every couple of years we have elections and we are coming up on a midterm election year this year uh the party that is in power at the moment doesn't have a lot of accomplishments that they can really point to in fact their big infrastructure bill just fell to pieces they don't really have much of anything that they can point to and said you know this is something that we did for you guys uh, that's not a great way to go into a midterm election season. The one thing that they are going to have is that right now we're looking at the Omicron variant. It's very uh, rapidly spreading. It's very transmissible. Uh, but one nice thing about it is that it seems to be very mild. It's pretty much on, on par with the common cold in terms of its effects. It would seem at this point, at the time of this recording, um, its effects seem pretty much on par with the common cold, maybe a particularly bad common cold. But uh, it's, it's a different animal than we've seen with some of the earlier COVID variants. Uh, you know, who knows where this thing popped out of? I, I've had my own theories about, you know, where it may possibly have come from. But let's just say, you know, it popped out of nature and this is, you know, 
good luck for us, or you know, good fortune for us. Um, well, uh, there's going to be a lot of desire to take advantage of that um, that opportunity to take credit for it. So as we, uh, you know, I think this is going to be a very difficult January uh, uh, here in the United States. I, I think uh, COVID numbers are really going to go through the roof. Uh, there's going to probably just because there are going to be so many people getting it, there probably will be many hospitalizations. There'll, probably, there'll I'm sure, be many deaths, you know, in the same way that there have been deaths from flus and colds in the past. You know, one of the great things about our healthcare system is that when you have a healthcare system that helps people to, uh, to live to a really old age, uh, you know, you're kind of fortunate to, instead of dying in your mid-40s, you die when you're 80, but your body's so weak at that point that, you know, you die from something like the common cold or, you know, which turns into pneumonia or you die from a flu or something like that. It's kind of a good thing when your society gets people to a point where they can be old enough to die of something that otherwise is so uh, toothless. Um, so certainly the, we still have lots of older people in our society. Whether or not the pandemic ever happened, we are in a demographic shift right now in the same way that there was a baby boom, a birthing boom, just after the uh, Second World War. That uh, is getting to the point where it's going to be a death boom now. I mean, that's just the way it is. People live to a certain age and then, and then they die. And in the same way that there was a big, uh, you know, uh, growth in, in birth, during that earlier time period after the Second World War, there is going to be a big growth in death now, and that would that would have been the case with or without the pandemic. Now, um, you know, I'm sure that that'll be used politically by people, but getting past the winter into the spring, getting into the summer, it's almost certain that all of those numbers are going to start going down. You know, we're getting out of the cold season, getting out of the flu season, getting out of the COVID season. All those numbers are going to start going down. And I think that there is going to be an enormous drive by the powers that be at the moment to take credit for that and kind of declare victory uh, at this point. I think that we could de de declare victory. It's kind of one of those things like the war is over if you want it. Uh, you know, COVID is going to be with us forever. You know, it sucks. It sucks that there are diseases that kill people. It sucks that there are flus. It sucks that there are colds. It sucks that there are all these different things. COVID is yet another one of those. And at this point, it's getting to the point where it kind of depends on how you want to look at it. You know, yeah, it sucks when people die, but, uh, you know, are you going to be collapsing your economies and having people die of suicides and, you know, alcoholism and everything else in, in order to try to limit these numbers? Or are you just going to accept that this is, you know, you do what you can, you know, socially distance, mask, you know, a vaccine, if you, you know, you think that's appropriate for you. Um, uh, but you go on with your life. And I think there's going to be an enormous desire with the powers uh, that be to declare victory, mission accomplished with this, uh, so that they can go into the midterm election year with some kind of an accomplishment. Of course, they aren't going to say, you know, we were able to overcome COVID because there was this random mutation that came out of Africa and it took over the world and, uh, you know, made it so that COVID, you know, essentially wasn't as dangerous anymore. Uh, you know, that's not going to be the story that they tell. The story is going to be, you know, uh, we just got over the tipping point with vaccines. You know, we kept saying people need to, you know, take more vaccines. And, you know, we it was the straw that broke the camel's back, you know, with the vaccines. We got the last person that we needed to to get the vaccine. And look, the, the you know, the COVID rates have just collapsed. Of course, the real re real reason is because COVID spread like wildfire with the new Omicron variant, and then you get out of the cold and flu season, and it was naturally going to come down. As surely as you have a baby boom and then a death boom, you know, you have the rise during cold and flu season of colds and flus and COVID, and and then the uh, the diminishing in the spring. I think that there's a big uh, desire uh, th that's going to be present with the people that are in power. Take advantage of that. They're going to want to say, mission accomplished. Look, we did it. We got enough people vaccines. Uh, we got enough people vaccines. Uh, oh, I can't, it's so cold. I can't, uh, I can't speak. We got enough people vaccinated. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I, I have some optimism there that uh, some of this push for more authoritarian measures is going to lose steam because of that need to say, hey, look, we did it. Mission accomplished. You voted for the right party, you know, and, uh, you know, hey, give us another couple of years so that we can, I don't know, do whatever else they want to do. Um, so I just want to share that with you guys. You know, it's a difficult time right now, possibly the most difficult time in recent memory. Uh, certainly things have been harder in the past. I mean, there, there are, you know, episodes through history that are much more difficult than what we're going through at the moment. And I, I think it's important to remember that, uh, you know, people talk about this as being, you know, it's the most deadly pandemic that, you know, humans have had. And, you know, 
there's a lot of humans right now. So it's kind of like, you know, you could have a category uh, three hurricane uh, hit Miami and do, you know, billions or whatever in damage. And you could have a category five hurricane hit an like, uninhabited island. And it's like, oh, the category three was so much worse, you know. Well, yeah, because there, there happened to be more people. There are a lot of people in the world right now. So like anything that happens is always like the worst because there's just more and more people to be impacted by it. Uh, but I think that, uh, you know, as things move forward, you know, there's always kind of a shift in history. You know, things go one way, things go the other. And I, I really appreciate that. I, I know here, uh, you know, on YouTube in the prepping community, um, you know, there, there's oftentimes kind of a pushback. There's people more on the left, people more on the right. Maybe there's more, more people on the right in the pep, prepping community. But I think we all benefit from each other. I know I tend to be far more on the left than most people in the prepping community, but I appreciate the pushback that people on the right uh, uh, engage in uh, on, on certain topics kind of so that I don't have to you know I think if people on the right uh, you know are always trying to push and make sure that their government doesn't get too out of control too out of hand I think we all benefit from that and uh, in the same way uh, you know if people on the left are kind of pushing in the other direction uh, trying to make sure that uh, you know government does at least kind of provide you know some of the services that we tend to appreciate I, I think that, that we kind of both benefit from each other you know and the fact that you know I'm on the left knowing that there are people that are more on the right that are going to advocate for those things so I don't have to as much and then people on the right can kind of benefit from you know people on the left that advocate for other other sorts of things so that they don't have to advocate for those so I think we really benefit from each other and it makes it so that not every one person has to be there advocating and pushing for everything all the time so season of hope I think there's reason for hope although that said you know you never know what's going to happen so it's important to always prep and be prepared and especially if you're prepping with things like food and other things that you know that you're going to be able to use anyway you know you can't possibly put yourself in a bad position because uh you know if you can eat your preps then you don't have to worry about that they were ever like a, you know a waste of your effort to procure them that's it merry christmas happy hanukkah whatever all the other ones are kwanzaa solstice i don't know it's the time of this recording, the solstice is tomorrow. Oh, I don't think the sun's even going to get above these trees today. <laughs> That's it. Happy holidays and uh, have some hope for the next year because I think, you know, things have been rough. Not, not historically as rough as they've ever been, but, you know, in our lifetimes, things have been reasonably rough. But I think there's some reason to believe that, uh, you know, we're, we're turning the corner and things are going to get maybe a little bit more normal. Or maybe they won't. That's why we prep. <laughs> Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.